Uh, this is Israeli government spokesperson Elon Levy. We appreciate your time. Uh, I, I want to start with where Natasha concluded, uh, and that is on the, the limited uh, basis efforts we've heard about, we've had reporting about, about flooding some of these tunnels with seawater. Can you explain to people what that actually means uh, and why there's confidence that there wouldn't be any hostages or civilians there? Israel is now having to find new, creative, and innovative ways to deal with an unprecedented threat in urban warfare, a whole underground city of tunnels built underneath urban areas in Gaza by Hamas to shield its terrorists. Now, I can't comment on the specific ways that our soldiers are going about destroying those tunnels, but we will, of course, be operating on the basis of precise intelligence. We will not do anything to harm the hostages. It is a central mission of this goal to bring the hostages home safe and sound. That's why, like so many Israelis, I have a dog tag around my neck now that says, bring them home now. This is an intensely personal issue for us in Israel, 135 hostages, and we're committed to bringing them all home, the men and the women, the young and the old, the civilians and the soldiers. We're committed to that pledge. There will be no one left behind, and we'll do everything we can to bring them home while continuing with our campaign to destroy the Hamas terror state in response to the atrocities of 10-7. It is certainly a central issue for the president and the U.S. side as well. The president will be meeting, uh, as we reported, with those families, the families of the eight unaccounted for Americans. Uh, today, there has been a lot of discussion about uh, the public view of a, at least what appeared to be a very clear split between the prime minister and the president yesterday. The president's remarks at a closed-door fundraiser. I, I see your skepticism in your face <laughs> uh, in terms of how you reacted. Why? President Biden said in that statement that Israel enjoys the support of most of the world, and it enjoys the support of most of the world because everyone understands that the atrocities of 10-7 cannot go unanswered, and the response to those barbaric atrocities must be the end of the Hamas terror regime. Now, we know that some nations are perhaps losing nerve. They're losing nerve because Hamas is working very hard to manufacture a humanitarian crisis in Gaza. It continues to operate in civilian dress, out of civilian areas, deliberately trying to put civilians in harm's way because it knows that those images will generate sympathy and sympathy will generate diplomatic pressure on Israel to stop defending ourselves. Right. Thankfully, the United States and the Biden administration have had the moral clarity from the very beginning of this war to say, we have to stand by Israel's side as it goes after the monsters who perpetrated the October but 7th think, massacre. That's the only way this war can end. I, you make an important point, and, and nuance is important here. There is no talk of the U.S. changing its posture. The president, I think, is probably uh, as steadfast on this issue as certainly any Democrat uh, in, in a mm. generation to some degree. But the point that the president has been making and that he said he had made to the prime minister uh, in their calls is... If, to what you're saying, other countries are losing their nerve, particularly close allies, and that's your framing of things, that is a big problem, not for the U.S. and their support, but for Israel and what happens next and the process uh, and the timeline of this conflict. We know that we're fighting the most moral fight imaginable, and that's a fight to bring to justice the monsters who perpetrated the 10-7 atrocities. This war will end when it is safe for children to sleep in Kfar Aza and Beiri and near Oz, and our allies know that. And as part of that, we're striking Hamas with unprecedented precision. We know that we are going after the October 7th monsters, after the terrorists who did that. We're going after those Hamas leaders, and we're doing it with precision unprecedented in the history of warfare, taking steps that no army in the history of counterterrorism operations in the world has taken to protect civilians. And part of our job is to continue reminding the world the efforts that we are making to minimize civilian casualties on the other side, despite Hamas's best efforts. It's sick, it's twisted, it's deranged. Despite Hamas's best efforts to maximize civilian casualties, to manufacture humanitarian crisis inside Gaza, because they think that those images will generate sympathy, and sympathy will generate diplomatic pressure that will stop us fighting and doing what we have to do in order to keep our children safe and make sure that Hamas can never perpetrate another 10-7 like it's been promising to do ever since that dark day. I know there is there are differences of opinion on the day after, right? And that's understandable. Uh, even U.S. officials acknowledge, given what happened on October 7th, the fact that the focus is on the military operation is exactly where the U.S. would be in a situation like that. 
However, the, U the U.S. has made clear repeatedly that it wants to see the Palestinian Authority or thinks the Palestinian Authority is the only real entity that's operational at this point that could uh, lead Gaza. The Prime Minister has been explicit that that is not going to happen. He will not allow that to happen. How do you resolve this? Unfortunately, the last time we gave the Gaza Strip to the Palestinian Authority on a silver platter, when Israel withdrew from the Gaza Strip in 2005, that led to the election of Hamas and then a coup in which Hamas overthrew the Palestinian Is Authority. Is the two-state solution just not on the table the at this point? I'm not being flippant You're about this. You're asking but... me questions about... No, no, I understand, but you're asking me questions about long-term political horizon while we still have body we still have body bags of unidentifiable human remains. At the moment, our objective is to bring Hamas down, to destroy Hamas in response to the 10-7 massacre, and we know that what is going to happen the day after is that Hamas will no longer govern the Gaza Strip. Now, we have a problem with the Palestinian Authority, which since 10-7 has been denying those atrocities, has been projecting blame for those atrocities onto Israel and has been giving extensive political and diplomatic cover for Hamas. Just the other day, the Palestinian prime minister, often presented as being a moderate, said that Hamas is an inextricable and inseparable part of the Palestinian fabric. And we're saying that whoever governs Hamas, the, whoever governs Gaza the day after Hamas, must fight terror and not fund terror. And they must be clear that Hamas has no place in Palestinian politics, instead of trying to make excuses for its crimes and saying that it's an inseparable part of the Palestinian fabric. We need a partner that is committed to fighting terrorism, not funding terrorism and making excuses for it. Elon Levy, we appreciate your time this morning. Thank you. Thank you.